All right, this is gonna be like my third time, third or fourth time starting this video. This video is gonna be for people who wants to get into carp fishing, wants to know what kind of stuff they need, or um, just people who just want to watch it, watch fishing, like fishing outdoors and stuff. But anyways, first off, what you need to get into or think about is the kind of reels that you want to use. Now, the best reels are going to be the bait casters, not the low profile ones, but the round ones. And let me show you what I use every single time I go fishing. And they perform fabulously. This here, I done a video on it before. It is a coastal tough. This combo here is you can get at Walmart for 30, about 30 some odd dollars. And um, anyways, these perform amazingly. I caught a 20 plus pounder before on these and it still throws out like a dream. I don't know if the gears are inside are metal or plastic. I'm guessing they are metal, but I don't know with how cheap they are. So in that case, it comes with a seven foot rod and it's gonna be a power medium match and fast and um so it's gonna be medium fast action and the line weight that you, it can hold is 20 to 40 pounds which this right here the rod is very flimsy i don't know if you can tell more flimsy than i like so i threw this out for uh half a season and I went out I got a set of four of these threw them out half a season and now I'm only throwing out two because I upgraded my rod and reels recently and I'll show you all those two and this here is a Pro Rocket, our B Garcia Pro Rocket, the Black Edition, and it's a um, 5500 series, and with a slug on my hand, uh, 5500 series. Now, this reel here is very amazing. I caught fish on it for the first time last night, and the fish I did catch fought like hail. Um, I'm trying to think of how big they were. I think one was 13 something and I had another bigger one as well. But um, this here, the rod is a Kunin Fiend rod. It is a 7.6 telescopic medium heavy action. The line weight is 10 to 20 pounds and with the lower weight it's a quarter ounce. Four, which I exceed that with the throw ball. And talking about something amazing, this rod here is amazing. I got for $50. Thank you, big boy. And um, this Pearl Rocket I got for right at $200. So this is one of them that I use. And let me show you another one. And this here is a Pearl Rocket. 6500 series i have 17 oh i have 20 pounds on the white coastal tough and then i have 20 pounds on the my other pro rocket this here i have 17 pounds high vis is your best friend in carp fishing because most of the time you're going to be fishing uh night time into early mornings around in north carolina there is that is and um the real the rod here same rod as before a kunin rod and um i got for 50 dollars like i said <clears throat> i didn't drink more water i don't drink water and um really here i got right at over 200 dollars this here is a 6500 series i don't know if i said that it is a five to three or five point three to one gear ratio and i believe both of these abu garcias are going to be metal gearing 
correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry if I'm shaking. Big boy is back after eating. And um, I run. Some people, big boy, stop. Some people will run one hook. I run two. And this is how my setup is. I run whatever line you want to run. And then I have a, I think a three quarter ounce weight. Doubt you can see that. And then I have this here. Don't know why I need this bead here. I really don't. Then I have a three way sw swivel. So you have the weight, this, swivel, and two hooks that you get at your bait store. I got all my stuff from a, um, um, what's it called? Local business. And uh, these hooks is a number four ounce hooks, I guess you call them. And um, only thing I don't know about this reel is this handle here. I don't know how I like it. So, cause I found myself last night trying to reel it in with this. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, I got this. It feels weird. But um, anyways, that's why I use only day basis. I use two coastal toss and then two my RB Garcia. All right, I showed you with them bait casters. That's what I normally use. And um, let me show you what you can use. Now, I wanna say this, some rod holders, you can't use with some of the rules. It just, it'll come off. You can use it, but if a fish takes off, your rod's gonna take off. So, this here is my catfishing rod. This is for example, I don't use this. This here is a, I don't know what the hell this is. <laughs> is a Jimmy Hoosen, Hoosen, who, who, I don't know, it's some fisherman. And it's, uh, it's his rod is a Cat Hunter Pro DX. What the, this is, you can use this rod for it. Got this at uh, Walmart for like $20, I think it was. And uh, it's a uh, Cat Hunter Pro DX reel with it. Um, I'm not gonna show, say too much about this reel. I don't know anything about this reel. Only thing I know is it catches fish. So, this here is what you call an open face. If you don't know, which you probably will know, um, open face. And um, with the same setup, you could do the 20 pounds, whatever you want to, um, and the same lure and stuff like that. I, I guess you call it lure setup. I don't know. But let me get to what else you could use. This here is a 808 reel that you can get from like Walmart or some bunch of other places like that. Sorry if you hear all them ducks. Um, anyways, 808, if you do use the 808, make sure to have metal gears because if these has plastic gears in here them fish if you catch a big 20 you have a chance of it to just stripping out your gears like crazy so you could use you could use sorry he was trying to bite me you could use um a normal 808 you could use an open face or you could use a um bait casters but if it's a bait caster, remember it's going to be around. You could use a low profile. Don't know how that would work. I don't know. But anyways, let's get into the rod holder section here. All right, for the rod holder section, there is a several kind of rod holders you could use. Um, this here is what you call a buffalo rod. It's um, your rod just goes straight out. Well, I can show you what the what it looks like. Let me twist out this way here, and it's not in the ground all the way. So let me show you what it looks like when a rod's in. It. All right, this is what the rod and a rod holder. This one's supposed to look like. This one goes straight out. You can angle it anywhere, however you want to do it. But this rod holder here is what I use. This style here. I have four of them because most pay lights around here you have four of them. Except for I think there's a couple that um, you can only have three. 
and in here is another style of the rod holder set that we use. This here is what my dad uses. Now with this, here, what I like about this is you can have it any way you want to. Have it pointed down, to the side, or up. Now I have to tighten it. And there is Big Boy. He's been trying to scratch at me and stuff like that. But that's what we use. And let me show you what a reel and that one looks like. All right, you can see like this one here, it goes, this one points straight down. This is what most of the people uses at carp ponds. And then I have four of these, four of those, because of Pay Lakes. But what I really like using is these buffaloes here. You can really tell that you have a bite. I just like it how when it's like this tall here, it's easy to jerk when you need it to. So. But now let me show you how you could tell you get in a bite. All right. Bunch of people use styrofoam and like styrofoam-esque bobbers. Dang cat. And um, what we use here is, might be too bright for you. It's like a little bobber thing here. And, but right here, I don't know if it'll focus. Let me see if it focuses. Look at my luscious beard here. But anyway, you see this line right here. That's where you put the line in. And with this, the styrofoam here, what you get is just get little bit pieces of styrofoam. You cut a little slit in them right here and you put it down and you slide it now i'm going to show you how to use both of them and what we also use is this here let me see if i can get you in closer now what we also use is these right here have it connecting to the rod here don't want to take it off but this is also pretty good. I don't like using these because you can't really tell when the fish are biting. Uh, you can only tell when they're running. So what you do with this is you get your line right here between the reel and your first hole, depending on what rod you have. You have it pointing down. Then you reel it in a little bit. And then how you can tell that you have a fish is like this when it pretty much just hits your rod and you can hear it basically that's why i don't like using them because you can't really tell when they're getting a bite now let me show you how to put these on how to use them all right so how to use the bobber things you stretch or you don't have to. You probably have to, but that big boy's trying to chase it. This is not gonna work too good. Got hooks on it. Damn it. So you just all right. So you cast it out where you want it to go, and then you got it. You let the drag out. Or let the let it go down. And then what you're going to do is have it face up like this. Now, with the styrofoam here, I mean, of course, you're not going to be stepping this far up. I'm just, this is going to be for example. You put this on. All right. It's all good. That's staying on. Then what you want to do is put on your rod holder here and start rolling in. And once it gets about like right here, what you want to start doing is, well, it fell off. I didn't put it on good enough. So let me try this again. Let me show you how to move it down as well. This is just a huge piece of styrofoam here. So 
let me show you how you move it. What you do is, don't know if you can see it, let me do this here. Show you how you move it is, why don't I get on this side? I do this side. I'm struggling today. I'm doing this all from the top of my head, so no scrap or nothing. So you get it like this, grab it, and you're just gonna pull your uh, line, just hold it, and then you're gonna push your rod forward. So that way it moves your styrofoam. Don't know if you can see it real good. And then if its line is still down, which it should be, your line should be like this. So if you're getting a bite, your line and stuff will be like this. Like this. That's where it runs. Now if you're getting bite, it's just gonna just go up like this. Because with yellow carps, they usually bite a little bit and run. Yellow car uh, buffaloes would just sit there and start going up and down. And sometimes it goes up like this, real high, and it stays there. Doesn't run, doesn't do nothing. You have a choice of letting it run with it or jerking the crap out of it. And um, most of the time I just let it run with it. And um, anyways, that's what that is, the styrofoam. How you could tell you're getting bites on it and stuff. So let me show you how to use the workers. They're like little bobber things. Take this off here, put in my pocket. Put the other in my pocket. Go and grab it. Ooh. Got some grass with it. So now you're just gonna cast out like you normally. Oh, that, that's not far. All right, cast out like you normally do. And then with this, you just have to put your rod back here. You can you, you can set, click it if you want to. Let me move you back. You can click it if you want to. Now I gotta move you up. I gotta move you in a good place now. Wow. All right, you gotta move it up like this, how it is. Then you're just gonna get this bobber here. And you're just gonna try and put it in that little slot there. That is, if you can get it in there. Of course, a 20 pound test line is gonna be, or 20 pound and 17 is gonna be hard to get in there. That's why I don't want to use these. Because you're just gonna be messing with that. your line a lot more than you really need to be. So, uh, styrofoam is a lot easier to mess with. Ooh, I'm struggling real hard right now. It's got to be in that circle there. Almost vinegar. It's almost all in there. Alright, there it goes. Oh, now it's back. Now, once these up here, what you can do is you just let it go where you normally do. Oh, that's a rod. You let it go like you normally do. It slides down. Then you want to put it back up here. Hold your line because all the because you don't want your reel to be loose. You just keep on riding it in. And this is a bad example. Let me get you off here. It's a bad example here. But I'm trying here. It'd be better to do out of pond. But most of the time, it's probably gonna be up here. And it's gonna be like this. And the same thing with the styrofoam, it goes up and down like that. So 
And what this, what stops it here is the friction. That's what always stops. If you're fishing close to the bank, use styrofoam. Because this will go all the way in the water. Float on top of the water. And it's going to be really hard to tell if you have a fish or not. That's where the styrofoam comes into play. So, yeah. And now you have a fish on your line. Your bobber line's going. Everything's going. And what you need, th some of those fish are too big to reach down, grab, or get the line, or rod and reel just flop it on land. The best thing for the fish is not to handle it rough. So, therefore, you, some ponds has big uh, walls going to the pond and stuff like that. It's really hard to get the fish in and stuff. So, therefore, this is what you use. You use a big ass net. This net here is probably every bit of seven foot tall. Doesn't look like it because it's all connected together. Um, I'm not going to open it because, yeah. But this net is huge. This is the kind of net you need. I also got this at a local bait store. Um, it's pretty pricey. Car fishing is pretty pricey. And um, once you get the fish on land, this is also what you're going to need to use too. Alright, so you got your fish in the net. You put it on land. And what you need to do is the fish is too big which that's a good thing sometimes because a bunch of ponds are doing small fish uh big fish and stuff like that the biggest fish poundage bunch of stuff bunch of tournaments like that so you got your fish in you want to go up there and weigh it you can't just some places most places won't let you carry up there with a net why would you that's dumb so what you need is a caddy or in other words a bucket however you want to say it this one here is a big daddy carp caddy and um most places once you take care of the fish that's the biggest thing is taking care of your fish don't roughhouse it i don't know how you roughhouse a fish fight it no. <laughs> But anyways, they want you to take care of your of the fish. It's not your fish, it's their fish. That's the biggest thing. So, most ponds want you to have a piece of foam in there. And this foam here, I also got a local bait store. It has holes in there so the water can sink through and uh, stuff like that. And once you weigh it, or once you go put in their uh, watering hole or how you want to say it, little pool thing and weigh it um, usually they will put it back in the pond and hopefully your fish is a big one and wins you some money because there is a lot of money in carp fishing that's just like last night me and dad we was fishing right beside each other because we didn't get the spots we wanted which where that light that sun which Thank you. Thank you. That's when you know you live in a country. Um, that's the slide. That's the like last night. Me and dad was fishing at a pond and um, not gonna say where for private stuff and all. Um, well, I might say it later on, but anyways, we won every single thing. They had a, uh, what was that? I think it was a $10 biggest fish. Had two closest to, because we hit one right on, right on the dot. And um, we was catching fish after fish after fish. And um, we won the biggest, the smallest, the clo two closest to. We didn't even know we won the last closest to. And we left that place out with a good amount of money. And um, 
I told dad, I was like, this is crazy. This is never going to happen again. I was like, I don't know how we got this lucky and stuff like that. And, um, cause a bunch of people there was catching fish and, oh yeah, it was a $5, uh, side pot every two hours. And, um, we won that as well. <laughs> um, and, uh, people was catching fish and literally 10 minutes to go to the next two hours, we caught the fish, bigger fish than them. So we knocked them off the board. I don't know how many times we did that. And we fished six to two in the morning, so. But um, anyways, if y'all wanna see, this video might be really long. Um, this video, if you wanna see some carp fishing videos, uh, let me know. I'd be glad to do some, or try to at least. And um, anyways, y'all have a blessed day. Hope I help you, and. Peace.